one of the main things I want to mention first of all is actually having permission to camp or permission to be on someone else's land. It's very important that you do that. Then what I like to do is just find a potential area, sit down, just take a look around. I'm looking for watercourses, I'm looking for firewood, I'm looking for other tree species and plants that can either help me along or feed me. All right. And then I'm cooling down, Yeah, everything around me is getting used to me being here. And then I have a good walk around and then find a final place for making camp. Well, this looks like a potential camp for the night. So one of the first things I do is drop my rucksack. Sit on that for two or three minutes, just to uh, ensure I've got a good sight. To my left here, I've got some higher ground. And then it follows down, down to the river, and down into the bottom and lower ground. I want to be in the middle, round about where I am now. I get the exchange of cold and warm air. There's a little slight breeze coming through at the minute that's keeping the, uh, the mosquitoes down. Just to the front of me here, about 150 metres away, is a water course. That's my source of water for washing and eating and drinking. So I'm just going to walk around the camp 360 degrees, just to ensure that all the trees are safe. Directly above where I'm going to pitch my uh, tent, I'll just look up. So the things I'm looking for is any snap trees, any hangers or widow makers. Uh, now some of these can be quite small, um, sometimes as thick as your thumb. If that's falling from 60 or 70 feet, uh, that could hurt. So this is a good example of a, a widow maker. As you can see, it's the, the top of uh, this larch tree here uh, that's snapped off and hanging. Um, it's nowhere near camp, but I just thought I'd show it as an example. So these are the kind of things you need to be aware of. So I'm really happy with the, with the mix of trees, really happy with the camp, I'm happy with the water course and, uh, and where we are. So now I'm going to start pitching camp. Uh, the system that I use in bad weather um, it's quite critical to actually practice this in good weather. The first thing I do is put the rucksack pretty much in the porch, but not inside the inner. Then, very quickly, I open up the top, open up the dry bag, and then start to throw things in the tent as quickly as possible. And then from there, that goes into the porch. Right, get inside the tent and zip the outer up. Then from there then I can actually set up camp inside. And that's it, camp set. What we're going to move on to now is actually putting a tarp up. So let's go and do that. What I need to do now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to put up a tarp, but there's a few things I need to do before that. One of the first things I make in a camp that I visit regularly, there's a thing called a beetle. Now a beetle basically is a wooden mallet. So that's roughed out with the axe. Whenever you're not using the axe or a knife or anything, always make sure the sheath goes back on. Well then, as part of my everyday kit, uh, the knife's in there anyway. So I'll just finish this off, get rid of all the rough edges. There we go, one beat. The other thing I have to make is four temp pegs for the tab. So, just take the lap lander. to land and then just with the axe I just need to do a rough point that's about all you need and then with the knife then 
around about one inch or 25 mil from the top I just take it right across the grain and just apply some pressure and then from there using that technique with a thumb on the back of the knife itself down to that stop cut so it looks somewhere like that and then using this technique here where the knife goes into thin air or just a pinching motion like that with a thumb well out of the way I just take on this 45 degree chamfer on the top and this prevents the peg from splitting when it's hit with the beetle and there we go that's it taps are really versatile uh, they can go in so many configurations obviously keeping the rain off you especially in the UK uh, and also the sun I've got my two trees that I'm going to put my tarp up and the same scenario goes with the tent I've checked the trees out, I've checked all the way around um, so now let's pitch the tarp going to light a fire. First of all ground preparation. So I'm going to put my fire pit in this area here obviously you can see at the minute it's full of um, spruce needles, uh, bits of moss, cones and things like that. I just need to get rid of that so a good thing is uh, just a stick just to clear the ground off and you want a good meter, a meter and a half and we, what we're aiming for here getting down into bare earth. This top surface here we just put to one side. So because the ground's so dry, uh, what I've got here is uh, about a two inch diameter, 18 inch long uh, piece of rowan, a spike on one end and I've chamfered the other end there. And I put that in on the circumference of the fire pit. And I bang that in with a beetle. Waggle it around and I move it on about two to three inches. I've punched holes all the way around the circumference of my fire pit. And now for my water bag, I'm just going to saturate each hole. It's only where I'm saturating the, the area inside and outside the fire pit and it's worth especially these dry times now it's worth doing this every two three hours okay so what we'll do now we'll let that soak in um, to saturate the pit and then we'll go and gather some firewood uh, one of my favorite firewoods is actually larch um, it's got the same BTU or energy output as oak so it's really good even though it burns slightly quicker it's great for getting a fire going, establishing a fire, and then you can put other woods on uh, to suit your needs. Um, this is a larch, and this branch has snapped off and come downwards, but it's hung up, and it's hung up off the ground. Uh, and this is perfect. This gives me all the grades that I need, and near enough enough firewood um, to get a fire to establishment. Where possible, I've gathered all the materials, and I like the fire from everything I've gathered from the woodland. So, if you look down onto the fire pit. Uh, this is our fire pit before, or from earlier, that we saturated. Um, I've got four sticks here, that makes a raft so we can get uh, clean, dry oxygen underneath the fire um, on first establishment. And then we have a 
piece of birch bark that I'm going to scrape with a knife, that's our uh, initial ignition. And over here I've gathered some birch bark that the tree gives uh, naturally, uh, naturally shedding bark. And then here I've organised uh, my firewood uh, into uh, the, the, the piles. First of all this is the, um, uh, the matchstick stuff, pretty much up to pencil thick, um, but no thicker than pencil thick. And then over here I've got pencil thick to finger thick and then finger to about half wrist. As always with fire lighting preparation is the key. So this is my striker and I've got the knife and it's good at this point holding a knife like this and using that part of the knife to scrape with the belly of the knife. So hold it like this and then start to scrape. What I'm after is just very, very fine swirls of the outer back to round about a golf ball size. So, I'm ready to go, everything's in place. Okay, and there we go. And that's lit, so there's no rush at this point. I can put my knife and my fire steel away. And then I just hover the birch bark over, I don't dump it on. And then I get my matchstick bundle. And I don't dump this on either, I hover this over. Okay, now it's good to have the length in these because you can lift up to let some more oxygen in and raise down if you need to. Oh, and you can see the flame coming through here now. So then, with the next grade up, I start going into a TP fire lay. And then the next grade on. Don't be too ailing about it, just dive it on there. And she'll be going fine. Morning. Well, good night's sleep after that busy day yesterday. So now it's uh, time to get up, have a wash, make breakfast and uh, head out to the hills again. I've packed all my tents and tarps away now and it's just to uh, finish off the, uh, the old fire from last night. I've already doused it with at least uh, 10 litres of water. Um, and the first thing I do before I actually turn it over is uh, what I like to call a fire dance. So all I've got left now is just small bits of charcoal and what I don't like doing is gathering these up and throwing them round, round the place. So all I do there is just stand in the fire and just crush all the charcoal to mush. Pick that up. And then douse again with more water. And then just feel for the touch in any hot spots. You can go get more water. So I'm quite happy that's uh, well and truly out. So the top surface that I moved to one side yesterday. So there we go. So the biggest thing here is sign of a good husband is no sign. <laughs> 